This training covers the user operation of the Cisco 509G and the 525G telephones. We're going to cover the basics of making calls, hanging up on calls, putting calls on hold, parking calls, transferring, blind transferring, assisted transferring, using voicemail, transferring to voicemail, and some other functions as well. Both the Cisco 509G and the 525G have similar functions. Both phones have a number of soft keys that change depending on what's going on and they have a number of hard keys that are permanently programmed to do things. The 509 that we're looking at here has an extra set of hard keys here that we've used for park functions. First the basics of making a call. You could either pick up the handset and just dial away or go ahead and just press the speakerphone and make the call. Dialing from this system is just using the, the normal uh, 11 digits, as I'll show here. After you dial, you could either opt to wait for it to complete or press pound and it'll send the, the call out quicker. To answer calls, just lift the handset or press the speaker key. You can put the caller on hold. You could transfer them. Once you put someone on hold, to take them off a hold, you just press the line key again. If I wanted to uh, transfer this call, I have two different options for transfer. I have a blind transfer and I have a regular transfer. Blind transfer sends the call to the other phone and doesn't give you an opportunity to talk to the person first before they get the call. To conduct a blind transfer, you just press the blind transfer key. You dial the extension you'd like to transfer it to and then you press pound. The call is gone. Now I have the call back on my phone and if I wanted to transfer it to somebody but talk to them first to make sure that they wanted the call, I would use the transfer key which is labeled XFER. So I press that key, I dial the extension that I'd like to send it to, press pound. That person answers the call. I could say, you know, I have a call from Bob, do you want to take the call? And they could say yes or no. Uh, if they don't want to take the call, I would press the cancel button. If they did want the call, I would press transfer and that would complete my... If I'd like to transfer a call directly to somebody's voicemail, I could press pound pound, then star and their extension, and it transfers it right to their voicemail. And then I would simply hang up to complete that operation. So if I answer a call, and it's for somebody else that maybe I want to send it to that's in the office. I could also park the call, which is a really handy feature for getting it to somebody else in the office. So to do that, on this phone I just press the park button. Seven, one. The system announces where it's parked the call. And if you notice on this phone here, park location 71 is now active. So I could pick it up just by pressing that button there. I now have the call. And say that it's for somebody else. I want to move it somewhere else. I could press that button again. And it goes ahead and it parks the call and you see that it showed up there on park location one so I could go ahead and pick it up if I wanted to and I have the call. If I wanted to forward my calls to a different number I would press the call forward button and I would enter the number that I wanted to forward them to. If I wanted to forward it to here to Medlin Communications I would just dial in our number. And then my display changes and it shows that my call forward tag here is dark. Any calls that were meant to come to this phone would now ring to the main number here at the office. If I want to change that, I just press this button and it cancels the call forwarding. So if you have a voicemail on your phone, there's a couple different indicators. First, the red light comes on to show you that you have voicemail. It comes on as a solid light. Second, next to any line keys that you have defined, you get a little message box uh, shown there. So if I wanted to check my voicemail on this phone, I'm just going to press the message button and enter my password, which by default is uh, 100. Password. You have one new and one old message. First message. Hey, Bob, it's you. Remember to give yourself a call later. Thanks. Bye. Press 3 for advanced options. Press 5 to repeat the current message. Press 7 to delete this me message deleted. No more messages. Press 3.
So when you first log into your mailbox, you're going to want to record your greetings so that when callers reach your phone, it makes some sense when they hear the messages. So basically what you do is you log in with your message into your mailbox by pressing the voicemail key and your password starts out as 100. Password. Login incorrect. Password. You have one old message. Press one for old messages. Press 2 to change folders. Press 3 for advanced options. Press 0 for mailbox options. Pre press 1 to record your unavailable message. Press 2 to record your... After the tone, say your unavailable message and then press the pound key. Hello, this is Bob Langies and I'm currently unavailable, but please leave a message and I will return your call. Thank you. Thank you. Press 1 to accept this recording. Your message has been saved. Press 1 to record your unavailable message. Press 2 to record your busy message. After the tone, say your busy message and then press the pound key. Hello, this is Bob Langies and I'm currently on the telephone, so please leave a message and I will return your call. Thank you. Thank you. Press 1 to accept this recording. Press your message has been saved. Press 1 to record your unavailable message. Press 2 to record your busy message. Press 3 to record your name. Press after the tone, say your name, and then press the pound key. Bob Langies. Thank you. Press 1 to accept this record. So basically that's it. You accept all your recordings. And uh, you want to record those greetings in your mailbox owner name uh, on the handset because the auto audio quality is better when people call. And uh, that's it to setting up your voicemail.